how's it going and welcome to Whiskey Whims with me, Stuart. Today, something a little different. We've got a laptop out um, again for the second time, I believe. Uh, the last time was to talk about the Whiskey Bible. But yeah, today we're going to go and do a deep dive on Reddit r slash scotch now all the big youtubers do reddit reaction review type thing type videos uh, like pewdiepie who's got 110 million subscribers so hopefully if i do some reddit reviewing i will to also get 110 million subscribers uh, but yeah there's a few things i wanted to go through and have a look at uh, basically reddit's just a social media platform where people can post things on uh, the one we're looking at, r slash scotch, doesn't have as many members as other big uh, subreddits. I mean, there's 148,000 members, but other subreddits have like millions and millions of members. So we'll go down and see what we can do. Uh, there's a few things that I do want to look at, and there's a couple we'll just stumble upon. Uh, but most of them seem to be reviews. So here's one here, the first uh, scotch I've purchased thanks to Reddit. Monkey Shoulder, 664 upvotes. Um, and uploaded by Evil Harry Dread, and he's got his cat in the background. That's uh, pretty cute. Yeah, I think Monkey Shoulder was probably one of the first whiskies I purchased. Uh, I, I don't know how I managed to get into it or why. I, I think I tried it in a pub, and then from them I kind of realised that this is a really good whisky. Uh, but yeah, I think that was one of the whiskies that got me into whiskies as well. There was obviously a lot of whiskies from Stevie, my, my girlfriend's dad. Uh, expensive or, or more prestigious whiskies, but Monkey Shoulder was a solid blend that kind of uh, piqued my interest for sure. Uh, the Lagavulin Offerman edition uh, will be finished in Guinness casks in the future. This is obviously old news, we already know about this. Uh, I think it's releasing here on the 1st of July, so I'm hopefully someone's reviewed it on Reddit because I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, not really a, the biggest fan of Diageo and the way they do things with their kind of advertise and market and um, just look at the Game of Thrones and their special releases. But Blair Athol's Diageo and it's one of my favourite distilleries. Guinness is one of my favourite drinks and it's Diageo so I shouldn't really complain about them that much. So I'm hoping this Lagavulin Guinness Cross will offer, um, no pun intended there with Offerman, will offer quite a lot uh, in, in regards to uh, drinking it. Yeah, so here we have the new Lagavulin um, and Talisker and the other Diageo special release labels uh, posted by Zip Blue. Uh, this has 596 upvotes. Uh, so the first one here is Lagavulin 12 with the, the line on the front, the lion's mane's on fire. Uh, a Hydra kind of looking monster for Talisker. Uh, some basilisk serpent type thing. I don't know myth mythical creatures very well, but we'll say it's a, just a, a serpent of the sea. Uh, another Lagavulin 26 year old with an R lion on it. Uh, Oban with a couple foxes. Royal Lock Nagar with what looks like a white stallion. I can't see any horns, so I don't think it's a unicorn. They've kind of missed a trick there if it isn't a unicorn. Um, but yeah, I'd have made it a unicorn. Unicorns are so much cooler than horses. Cardu <laughs> uh, with a nice blood oak kind of tree that looks like something out of Game of Thrones. 14 year old. And the Singleton with a sprite or fairy or nymph or uh, some sort of mythical creature again. Uh, I'm sure there's more than just these ones, but yeah, these are the ones that have just been posted. Uh, this person said, with crazy new labels. They are a bit crazy, they're a bit out there. I, I, I don't think I like them. I, they're nice artwork and it'd be nice in a, in a book or, or, I don't know, something like that to go along with a book. But they're not really whiskey labels. They might look different on the bottles, but for the time being, they sort of look a little tacky. Um, they don't look like labels to me. But yeah, like I said, they might look better on the bottles. Uh, it's good artwork. There's no denying that. But I just don't think it would look right on a, a, a whiskey bottle. Taking stock on my return from Isla, Rainbow Descent, 591 upvotes. So what have they got here? Um, a Brew Gladi, uh, a little miniature, Ardbeg and Noah, which they've opened, Ardbeg Drum, yeah I wouldn't have chosen the uh, the drum uh, unless unless you tried it and enjoyed it, but it's just not for me. Uh, a couple small Buna Haven samples, a Buna Haven hand fill, Ardbeg Perpetuum, I've heard good things about that. Uh, Lagavulin Distillers Edition, yeah the Distillers Edition 
like the Kalila, uh, Lager Villain, Craig and Moore I think do it as well. They, they all seem to offer good whiskey, uh, the distillers editions. Lager Villain Miniature, I don't know what, what type that is, I can't really see. I'll try and zoom in in the photo on my terrible computer. Um, let's see, La oh, a Lager Villain, this looks like a hand fill as well, yeah, another hand fill. Um, so that's pretty cool. It looks like they've got the Lager Villain um, Offerman edition in the background there. I wonder if that's the brand new one, the Guinness one, it probably is. Uh, a Kilcoman, a miniature Kilcoman, which they've opened as well. Uh, the Kilcoman Living Year Old. Uh, a Kilcoman Bramble Liqueur, <laughs> right? That's a, um, a unique thing to, to be buying. And Isla Dry Gin. Uh, I wonder what, he's, what, what they've said about this. That laddie in Sierra Cask is probably really good. Uh, I'm very excited about it. Independent bottle. Now, they've not really said anything about the, the Bramble uh, liqueur. That's quite a, a weird purchase, but I suppose when in Isla, um, yeah, buy, buy everything. <laughs> the Pope. Uh, the Pope's a fan of whiskey. So, in r slash scotch, this got 366 up votes. And in R, today I learned which is another subreddit, it got 23,000 uh, upvotes. So it just goes to show you the different uh, communities and sizes and the, the, the people follow. Scotch is obviously quite a, a confined, quite a small community. Uh, but today I learned in 2019, Pope Francis received a bottle of Oban malt whiskey while visiting Scottish priests and declared it to be the real holy water. Uh, the BBC captured the footage for a documentary which was censored by the Vatican. <laughs> Um, I couldn't imagine someone in his stature saying uh, that the whiskey is the real holy water, that's a bit uh, surreal. I mean, surely that's some sort of blasphemy, uh, maybe that's why it was censored. But yeah, what we got here, 25 year old uh, Talisker cast strength, wow, that must be some dram. 57.8%, I'd hate to think what that cost. Let's see if there's anything in the comments, see if we've got a price here. Uh, let's see, look how slow my computer is at loading. Uh, it doesn't say any price, it does have a, they do have a, a, a write up. Um, what a treat of a scotch, top three bottles I have ever had hands down. Now that's a big statement, but I just wonder what the price was and if that comes into it in any way. But yeah, I'm not going to read out the full tasting notes that are there, if you want to pause and uh, read them. But it sounds like a tasty dram nonetheless. Uh, this is also my first time doing a kind of Reddit thing, so I wasn't sure how to, if I should read out everything, but I'll try not to. Uh, our big wee beastie with a, an Alsatian, a German Shepherd, that's quite cute. So this person's reviewed it, uh, Gear Bear. we'll see what they've said about it. Because I think when I, I reviewed it, I mean, I liked the whiskey, but the 10 for the price is just a better dram and a more accessible dram anyway and one that I'd have more in my, my, my collection over the five. So it'd be interesting to see what they say about it. So they picked it up for $43 US, which is fair enough. Uh, the peat proof and youth aren't shy. Nice looking kind of rhyming there. Yeah, it is, it is a little youthful dram, but it's not overly youthful. It's still nice and uh, well balanced. The equip, uh, what's it got here? The smell of gym equipment. That's a pretty cool, uh, cool scent, the smell of gym equipment. I've never thought of that before. I'll really try and use that. Uh, palette, medium thin mouthfeel, uh, yeah, fair enough, a bit thin. Uh, some dark chocolate with espresso, uh, charred bits of beef, sounds good. Finish, medium, dark notes dominate, uh, exposing lemon, zest, grapes, whole grain, blah blah blah. I like, they like it, I don't know, I keep saying he, it might not be a he. Um, they like this, but not quite as much as the older are big variants. Yeah. I don't think it's as, it's it's nice, but it's not a replacement for our big 10 and I would always pick our big 10 up over the 5. I don't think the 5 is one I'll buy again once it's finished, but they've given it a 6 out of 10, so their scale is 6, which is good. We'd be happy to drink neat and would make an exceptional cocktail. Yeah, so that doesn't seem to be too high a score with their scale. Brugladi <laughs> Rare Cast 1985 Bourbon, uh, Hidden Glory 32-year-old. Damn, that's, I don't think I've seen a uh, Brugladi that old, and that is a funky, funky glass. I'm not sure about drinking out that. Uh, that doesn't really look that practical, but yeah, it makes a cool picture. I'm just wondering if they've got any 
tasting notes and all of that, so we'll go into the comment. Yeah, the whiskey is cool, but tell me more about the glass. Uh, down, did some googling, found them on AliExpress, they're called inhales, an inhale glass. Uh, so it seems more uh, people are more interested in the glass than rather than the uh, the bottle. But yeah, I, I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't be buying that that glass. That just seems like a, a real hassle to drink from. Unexpected Hat's got uh, a collection here, their current collection, and it seems that they are. Uh, this was actually six months ago, as you can see up here. So that was their collection six months ago. You could obviously see they're a bit of a, a peep fanatic. Uh, with the Laphroaig 10, the Peep Monster for Compass box, they've got the Arbeg 10, the Oogie, uh, Arbeg Coravecan, Highland Park 12 and the Talisker 10. All pretty uh, core range whiskies and uh, a good starting collection for sure, especially with the Peep, but I think you're going to experience Peep fatigue <laughs> pretty quick if you don't get some normal kind of Speyside or Lowland whiskies in there. Uh, the only ones I wouldn't have yeah, probably the, uh, the the Highland Park 12. Uh, in fact, it's probably the only one I wouldn't really have. Or, or the Oogie and Cory Reckon. Like the Cory Reckon and the Oogie Dow are great uh, art bags, and there's no denying that. But I just always keep the 10 in my collection for some reason. Uh, and the Oogie Dow and Cory Reckon just kind of I kind of forget about them. But they're great drams. It's all not a statement um, whiskey as well. But yeah, that that looks like a great starting starting point collection for sure. The Tasker 10 is a great whiskey. For my 30th birthday, I went something special, Optimore 7.3, eight months ago. Uh, like I said, I've sorted this by uh, top by this year. So this is Avalon 33. Uh, I wonder if they're 33 now. <laughs> no, eight months ago is only, that's not even three years, so shut up, Stuart. Uh, so have they got any tasting notes? Because I had the 7.3 and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was expensive for what it was, but I really, I really do miss that bottle. Uh, so yeah, they've got uh, they've got a kind of tasting note here. They've not got any scoring, but like, I just want to see what the final thoughts are. Absolutely no regrets for buying this ball. Yeah, I had. I don't think I had any regrets, and like I say, I genuinely missed that whiskey. It was a superb whiskey. Uh, it's an amazing drama, plenty of depth, and I'm glad to mark it off my list. That being said, I wouldn't go out my way to buy it again. Well, I do miss it. Would I buy it again? <sighs> it's too much. To, to say I would buy it again, it cost too much, uh, but yeah, it was it was a great whiskey. There are plenty of fantastic bottles at a third of the price. You're, you've hit the nail on the head. If you have the opportunity to try it, don't hesitate. You won't be disappointed. So I just want to see if they get the looking at the tasting notes. I don't. I remember getting a real burst of like tropical fruits from this whiskey, um, and they don't seem to have picked up on that. Just obviously different palettes and stuff. Uh, there's someone commenting, love, love, love this dram. Probably my favourite Optimore. I'm kind of glad I went for the 7.3. Uh, I think it was pure luck. I don't know why I went for the 7.3. Maybe the white box and the frosty glass look. Uh, but yeah, I, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. This is interesting. Uh, posted by Wearable Bliss. The first time I see a box for whiskey that is useful. I totally agree. This box from uh, Untold Riches from Weems, even though I uh, don't present it with the box, the box is in the garage. This tells you everything. It's got all the cast numbers down the left, uh, the percent by volume VAT and cast fill date, cast type. It gives you all the casks used in this whiskey. Uh, talk about transparency, it's brilliant. And yeah, it's from the, the Buna Haven 28 year old, very reasonable, 145 to 150 pound. Uh, but you can see the three sherry butts are actually four years older. I love this and wish all special releases would have this or even all whiskies while I am dreaming. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is great to see this from Weems and it, it, it hopefully will urge other distilleries to do it, but I highly doubt it. But there are distilleries that do this already and it's, it's a great it's great to lead this by example. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was uh, Ralphie's uh, response from Glenn Dronach. So Ralphie did a video uh, basically speaking about the chill filtration issue with Glenn Dronach and Glenn Dronach then responded to Ralphie asking him to correct some parts of it. So this is the post from uh, Glenn Glenn Drack and it says Glenn Dronach responds to Ralphie's extras about removal of chill filtration. So instead of watching the whole video, we'll go into little snippets of it, uh, but basically someone's paraphrased it, so too long, didn't read TLDR. Um, basically, Glendronach got in contact with Alfie 
uh, asking them to phone, give them a phone and visit the distillery and Ralphie said, right, put everything down in an email and we'll get this out in the open. So here it's here, JD, obviously Glendronach and R, Ralphie. So Glendronach, ABV will not be changing and Ralphie says, this isn't, was only something I implied could happen in my video. JD, no artificial colouring is ever added to Glendronach and uh, Ralphie said that's good to hear. My issue with this statement is that if they're chill filtering for maybe some reason for consistency, then somewhere down the line they could add colouring or might want to add colouring to ensure that all the whiskies look the same. So although they've said that it's no artificial colouring is ever added to Glendronach, this could change. Uh, Glendronach Brown Foreman is independent, family owned, yada yada, not a shareholder controlled company as you suggested in the video. So Ralphie's obviously said that in his other video. Uh, and Ralphie, Wikipedia, Brown Foreman is a public traded corporation, family owned, could only control 70% of the shares. The remaining 30% of shares may not have voting rights but they're still shares, not a shareholder controlled company, I question that. Yeah, but whether the shareholders have that much of an influence on the rights and on the voting, yeah they might not have a vote per se but uh, 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 JD, we've removed non chill filtered from the packaging to provide flexibility in processes to optimise product quality, consistency, clarity and stability. Alright, we'll see what uh, Ralphie's responses to that and then I'll uh, kind of give my thoughts. So consistency and clarity, okay. Quality, highly a matter of opinion. Stability, highly debatable. I don't think Springbank, Aaron, Glen Alke, Deanston, Buna Haven and Ardbeg have issues with stability. Ralphie, non chill filtered whiskies are unstable. I completely disagree with that and so do a number of independent bottlers and whiskey producers. So they've said flexibility in processes. So this is just basically them saying they want to chill filter so they've got flexibility. Yeah, all right, so fair enough, they don't want to lie to us. To optimise product quality, I don't think, as Ralphie says, chill filtering improves the quality. It might improve the quality of some whiskies. Uh, or not, I can't see it improving the quality. It might make a, a whiskey more appealing or, or uh, easier to drink in a sense. Uh, because it's removed of fatty acids, because it's, it's chill filtered, it's removed some ABV so it makes it softer, it makes it smoother. Uh, so possibly that's what they mean, but I don't think that's a quality thing, that's more of a uh, pushing it out to the, the less um, experienced drinkers, which isn't an issue, but I wouldn't say it's a quality thing, I'd, I'd say it's more, of a, it's more of a marketing thing, it's more of a money thing. Um, I think if you, if you want to argue that about quality, put your whiskey out, uh, cash strength or 46% ABV or 48% ABV, you can add water to it, that's not an issue, but when you chill filter it, you are removing fats, you're removing oils, you're removing good stuff from the taste. So why don't you just put it out at a good ABV and let people decide to add water or not to, to, to suit their palate. Uh, consistency, yeah, this is the, the, the thing I was on about with the colouring. So they're saying they're not going to add colouring, yet they're wanting consistency. Chill filtering does make things consistent. Uh, you won't get a haze and the temp, the high temperatures and things like that over in America or whatever. Uh, you won't get that cloudiness when you add water, the, the scotch mist and all this good stuff. So that's where the consistency comes in. So you can look at, say, Glendronic 15 Revival, say all of them look the exact same year after year. They all look the same, uh, but the colour looks a little bit different. So what do we do? We add colouring. So I can see that at some point in the future they might add colouring. Uh, but I like the whole batch variation, that's what makes whiskey unique, that's what makes it fun. The fact that you can have one one year tasting a little bit different, looking a little bit different from the next year, that's just part, part of it, it's part of the fun. Uh, clarity and stability, yeah well obviously they're going to have to take non-chill filtered off if they want to be clear. Um, so I don't really understand the whole clarity and stability, but I don't understand stability whether that means with sales and um, product. I, I don't understand the stability, but to be honest, uh, I mean, Ralphie said stability, highly debatable. I don't think Springbank, uh, blah, 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 are big, have issues with stability. I wonder if that's just the fact that because they're non-chill filtered, uh, some are in chill filtered, but because they're non-chill filtered, they don't have stability or something. I, I don't really understand that statement there. You might be able to explain it to me. Um, but yeah, there's a, an interesting bit also, Glendronach was said anyway to update the video with corrections. So Glendronach have obviously reached out to Ralphie 
uh, and wanted a little chat to try and clear things up, thinking Ravi has um, bad mouthed them in a sense. But what he's saying is pretty much true. Yeah, he's maybe implied that the colouring or the ABV could be changing, which I think it might. I would imply that. Um, and he's obviously maybe got the, the shares or things wrong that uh, Glendronach don't seem to be happy about. But to come away with, can you update the video with corrections? No, what Ralphie's done is great. He's released a video, he's gave us all the, the, the content or the email, the information, and then we as consumers, um, viewers can decide whether or not to buy Glendronic or anything like that. Because they, they must have had some sort of dip in their sales or maybe just some low level PR person has seen the video and said, oh no, this is going to be bad news for us. Because Ralphie has a lot over 100,000 subscribers. He does have some pull, some influence on whiskies, uh, whiskey sales. Any of the whiskies he reviews that are highly rated, they, they tend to sell quite quick, quite well. So maybe they are, they're kind of bricking it. Maybe they're kind of trembling in their, their, their boots. But yeah, I'm not sure why they've kind of reached out. Uh, maybe a PR stunt, I don't know. But to ask him to like change his videos and that is just a bit pathetic to be honest. But yeah, I wanted to see what uh, was said on the end of the video because what he said in the end of the video was quite uh, interesting. I'm giving my advice as a consultant totally for free. Ralphie is such a dramatic, he's brilliant saying uh, <laughs> he's going to give his consultancy for free. He's very well spoken, he's very, uh, you can tell he's quite intelligent. Um, Quite witty. Uh, this is brilliant. Someone who's far more valuable to the Glendronic and Benriach brand. And the this consultant is very worthwhile connecting with because the feedback they provide is absolutely invaluable in helping to support the decision making of rebranding policies currently taking place and potentially happening. <laughs> I wonder who he's going to say, he's dragging it out, he does, uh, I mean, I like to talk, but I think Ralphie <laughs> likes to talk a lot more than I do, um, this is why I couldn't play the whole video or play snippets of the video, because it's quite long and it'd be a nightmare to trim and cut, I, I don't know how he does his edit, and I don't even think he edits, I think he just does one take. In the future, and what I'm saying to Glendronic and to the consultants and the communication team is, you will find these consultants down in the comments box below. In the so yeah, basically he's, he's saying that Glendronach shouldn't contact him. He's just a, he's almost a spokesperson. He's almost just a, um, he's just commenting on things, but they shouldn't contact him. They should take a look at the comments on his last video and take a look at the comments on this video and then um, basically read what they're saying. Uh... The comments that are being left, over 600 comments. <laughs> All right, Ralphie, you got 600 comments. I do well to get about four comments on my videos. All right, all right, calm down. I've been left in the previous Extras Review 872. And a lot, lot more comments are now being left by Articulate. Well, I'm not sure by Articulate. That's probably, yeah, he's probably right with Articulate because I've not commented and I cannot articulate at all. Uh, so his, his viewers uh, are probably more Articulate than me. Uh, I mean, I watch his videos, but I don't always comment. Uh, I don't always catch all his videos because they are quite lengthy. But yeah, uh, I like to the point. Uh, I don't know why I say I like to the point, because I'm terrible at getting to the point, uh, so sorry. Well budgeted, experienced malt mate, Glendronic fans, who want you to listen to them. Yeah, that's, that's, that's fair enough, and it's very interesting for Ralphie uh, to say this. The, the, the people that are commenting are people who are buying these whiskies. They're, they are consumers, they're you and I um, who drink the whiskey. And we're obviously upset that, it's a little thing to get upset about, but it's, it's taking away a part of the contract, taking away a part of the whiskey that makes it better. Um, and if, they're, if they are bricking themselves, if they are shaking in their boots at the idea that sales are gonna drop, 
then all they need to do is look at the comments in Ralphie's videos, uh, heed what he's saying, heed his warning that you might lose some sales on your whiskies uh, in the future with the removing of uh, non-chill filtration. The fans, the, the drinkers, the Glendronic diehards are obviously wanting it to be non-chill filtered. Um, so the fact that they're, they're kind of going in this direction almost is a is a kind of screw you to the fans of Glendronic saying we're not really that bothered about what you want, we're just going to do it anyway. This might be a PR stunt, they might reverse it. Uh, I think Ralphie did ask them about if it was being reversed but they said nothing's changed. Uh, they're not changing anything, so they're sticking with the chill filtering. They're sticking with removing that, and I think we've already seen the bottles be released. Um, yeah, I've seen some in the shop that had the non-chill filtered removed. So they've not changed it at all. Uh, they've not went back. They've not backpedaled. So it's quite interesting. Maybe down the line they'll they'll realise they've made a mistake. But yeah, th this has been the video. Uh, this has been a video of sorts. I hope it's been interesting. Uh, I kind of like commenting and looking at people's reviews. It's quite refreshing, actually. Um, I would like to, in the future, be able to review other people's YouTube videos. <laughs> uh, like, re review a review, almost. I think that would be quite cool. Uh, it might sound stupid, but, I, yeah, I'd like to do something like that. Like, get a few, see what people are saying um, and their the reviews and stuff. Maybe not, but we'll see. I, I like doing this. This was fun. Uh, it'll be fun editing because it'll probably be really long. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully you have enjoyed it. It'll be good to see what the feedback's like. But yeah, I've been Stuart, this has been Whiskey Wims. I'll see you later.